Welcome back to Essentially Speaking. Today's guest is Matt Basinger. With he's the CEO of Swell Spark. Matt, thanks for being with us today. Uh, would you mind Absolutely. just giving us a, a quick rundown of uh, you know what you do at Swell Spark? Yeah, man. So Swell Spark, you probably know us better as either Breakout KC, Blade and Timber Choir Bar, uh, soon to be Sinker's Lounge. Um, we are out of home experiential entertainment um, and, and often what we call small box entertainment. So you can find us in, you know, retail centers, shopping centers, downtown Kansas City. Um, we have 10 locations across the country from Honolulu all the way here to KC. Awesome. Um, so you guys weren't necessarily classified as an essential business, but I really wanted to talk to you not only to follow up about the distribution of the, the Jay Rieger hand sanitizer, but also, you know, the new product you launched. But before we jump into that, would you mind just kind of talking about how business has changed for you since the shutdown with Swellspark? Yeah, I mean, we, uh, we started seeing the, the effects of coronavirus, of COVID-19, uh, first in our Seattle location. It was kind of the first epicenter of the U.S. And so we, we kind of knew it was coming. Um, we knew it was serious, uh, I think, early on. But as of, I think, March 13th or 14th, we have been shut down at all of our locations across the country. Um, I mean, from the standpoint of how has it affected us, we went from having our best year ever by far to no income almost overnight. Um, and so it's, it has changed everything. Yeah. Um, well, I, I know that you unfortunately had to, to let some people go. I had uh, a couple of really good friends caught up in that. Um, but I, I did hear great things about how you handled that whole process. So props to you for, uh, you know, doing that with grace and, uh, you know, with sincerity, um, looking out for your people. Uh, how'd, yeah. that, how'd that process go for you? And I, obviously no one wants to be in that situation, but no, how'd you I mean, it's that? the, it's the worst thing ever. And, and really, you know, there was a group of probably 10 different Kansas City business owners and, and Andy Rieger and, and myself were on that, that call. And it's funny because initially we were all talking, hey, we're going to do everything we can. We're going to get through this. We're going to keep all of our employees. We have to, this, you know, this is, this is for Kansas City. And then in short, the reality of the situation sets in where you start to see what payroll is. You start to see what we can afford, what we can't afford. And, and then you start to really run the numbers of wanting to make sure there's something to come back to. Right. And so at the end of the day, you know, it, it probably sounds pretty counterintuitive, but our hope is to come back. Um, that doesn't seem counterintuitive. That's, that's <laughs> <laughs> very intuitive. Right. Um, but making the decisions and making the cuts early enough so that we had something to come back to was really the decision that, that we had to arrive to. And that, and that includes myself. And we took every single person in our company off the payroll, um, you know, outside of two essential person people who are looking after our buildings, making sure the stuff isn't getting broken into. And, and that's not myself. Um, but we had to let go of about 240 people company wide. And there were, I mean, gosh, there's a lot of tears, you know, there's, it, it's embarrassing in a lot of ways. But at the end of the day, when we look at the numbers of how many folks across the country had to make those decisions, not to say that that makes it any better. Mm -hmm. um, but this was something that just hit all of us uh, I think a lot harder than anyone could have anticipated or, or have ever planned for. Yeah. Um, so outside of, uh, you know, operations changing, you know, pretty drastically having to, you know, let uh, a ton of people go, um, you've recently kind of shifted focus, um, you know, with what you're doing with SwellSpark. The first, uh, I guess, pivot being the distribution of the Jay Rieger hand sanitizer. I guess, how yeah. did that partnership come into place? You know, Kansas City has an incredible small business community, and I think we're going to come out of this even better uh, in, in many ways than, than having gone into it, because I think we've realized how important the Kansas City small business community is for our city at large. Um, but before, you know, we're so appreciative of what the government is doing in many ways to try to help small businesses. But in the meantime, we were left to help ourselves. Um, we, with Rieger starting the, the production of hand sanitizer, um, to completely pivot to the point that you're having to go and make all this stuff as well as sell it, you know, dispense it, get it to the general public is a really challenging thing to do. And so fortunately, Andy and I, we go back, you know, quite some time. We both started our businesses around the same time and we were able to have just some really frank conversations where I said, hey, Andy, we're, we're really good at setting appointments. We're really good at um, general communication with the public. It's something we've been doing for a long time. What if you focused on making the sanitizer, focusing on the large accounts, obviously, and, and would you be willing to let us take this off of your plate? Um, and I think once we were able to kind of eloquently show 
how we could do it really well and how we could kind of over communicate with folks and that we had some people who were on board and on mission with trying to help Kansas City. Um, he and I guess the entire company, the Rieger, folks at Rieger allowed us the opportunity to help serve with that. Um, and I think pretty immediately we saw that it was just a really good, a, a good setting. You know, we were able to set up the like, we went from people waiting for a couple hours to get a bottle of hand sanitizer to, I think we're, we're helping customers. I think once every 10.8 seconds, I did the math. Um, and so we've really been able to create this, I think pretty streamlined process to make sure that people who have needs are able to get those needs, not just the folks in hospitals and government agencies um, and some of the essential workers, but also just people who need this for life at home. Yeah. Um, and so it's really an honor and a pr privilege to be able to serve alongside Rieger in yeah. this capacity, um, but also to help the general public in a way that wasn't what we anticipated or planned on doing. But I think at the end of the day, um, you know, times like these are situations where everyone can step up in the ways that they can step up. And this happened to be one way that we saw that we could serve and help pretty immediately. Yeah. Well, props to you for recognizing that need so quickly. I know, um, you know, when I talked to Andy, he said people were lining up a couple of hours even before yeah. they opened up to distribute that. So again, thanks for, you know, pitching in and uh, recognizing that need very quickly. I, I know the community uh, appreciates that, the streamlined yeah. process. Um, so outside of uh, that distribution, you also have recently launched a new product called Sinkers at Home. It looks like yeah. so much fun. I'm definitely going to get in on that here pretty soon. But would you mind kind of explaining that and how people can uh, look into that? Yeah, you know, we, um, I think that we've done a really good job, as I mentioned, with out of home entertainment. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, there are numerous people in and around Kansas City who have hopefully had a blast at Breakout KC or at Bladen Timber or Choir Bar. Um, and what we really are about at Swellspark is, is gathering people for shared experiences and making it easy to have fun. And we've had so many people reach out saying, hey, Matt, are you guys going to do mobile escape rooms or breakout boxes? Or are you going to do axe throwing at home? Is there anything that can be done? And um, we kind of evaluated a lot of the different opportunities and none of them felt like they were anything more than I'd say a money grab, um, which is this is not the time for that, I don't think. Right. Um, but in kind of looking at all our options, looking at the ideas on the table, um, really back up against the wall saying like either we have something or we don't uh, this idea of an at-home mini golf course that you can play with the folks that you're you know at your house with or the fact that you can do it through a zoom chat or a facetime call or something like this right. where like literally I could be playing you right now yeah. um, and, and I think the more we thought about it like you know I think of my dad or I think of my brother and and I love him to death right but we're just not the type of people who are going to sit here and look at each other you right. know, on a Zoom call and just talk. Yeah. Um, whereas if we had something to do in addition to speaking, I think that we're far more likely to have an hour or two long conversation. Right. And and this, as we realized, this provided that opportunity. And so, yeah, Sinkers at Home, you know, I don't, I don't know if this is a 10 year project or a four week project or what it is, but um, I can tell you it's really, really fun. Yeah. And we hope that it provides an opportunity for companies and for friends and families and businesses to, to be able to actually do something together. Because yeah. I think the more that people don't feel stuck in their house, the more that we all feel like we have some options of how we can kind of be in, you know, this much of control of our situation, okay. uh, the better and happier and healthier everyone's going to feel. Right. I totally agree. Um, and, you know, I've, I've been catching up with a lot of friends over Zoom. And, you know, after the first couple of weeks, it's like, you know, how, how much more can we really just sit behind a computer and, and talk? Um, you know, you definitely want to do something active. Uh, and I think this is a great, um, I guess, great way to do that. I, and I know that uh, a lot of people are going to be very interested uh, in, in buying that. So I'll include the link below. Uh, I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, anything else you'd like to, to close with? Any any resources or anything we can do to help you out at the moment, Matt? You know, I think what's like this situation isn't fun. You know, it's not fun for anybody. I think if there's a silver lining, um, I think there's going to be a lot of good that comes out of this. Uh, and again, it's been it has been such a joy to see how people have pivoted, how they've been malleable, how people have gone out of their way to help and to serve. And so, you know, I'm really we just had you just had Andy on the show and I just think to look at the folks who have really I mean spent countless hours in order to make an impact for our city to make an impact for people who are of need those are the folks who I hope after this we can all look to them and say man they're the leaders of this community 
Um, and, and if we're associated with that in any capacity, then it's an honor to be so. But I think more importantly than that, um, you know, this is, this is the universal shared experience that all of us will have for the rest of our lives. Right. Um, you know, what did you do during COVID is now the universal icebreaker that everyone yeah. will have to talk about. And, and we've always tried to serve as that icebreaker through ax throwing or through, through escape rooms. Um, I think my goal would be that we can hold on to hope and that we can continue moving forward, you know, positively. And um, there is, there is another side to this and uh, I'm excited to, to get there and, and hang out with you in person and yeah. um, continue to see Kansas city grow in, in amazing ways. Likewise. Well, Matt, I would definitely include you in that, in that Kansas city leaders conversation. You're doing a lot of great, uh, a lot of good for the community in a time where we need it most. So, um, you know, I'm appreciate you, man. we all appreciate your efforts uh, and uh, look forward to supporting you any way we can. Moving forward. So have a great, great good. Time. Thanks so Thank much you. for your time. Yep. Take care.